Hello, I am Lauren Shepard, a product technical specialist here at Meritor. I would like to welcome you to today's Meritor Monthly Interactive Distance Training Seminar for June. Today we will discuss suspensions and how a little bit of time in doing visual inspections and a little preventative maintenance can save you a lot of money in the long run. Let's first talk about what the function of the suspension is. The suspension is there to design to carry the load. It provides stability against side sway. It transfers driving and braking forces between frame and axles. It produces suitable riding and cushioning properties to protect the freight and also to make it more comfortable for the driver. It maintains axle alignment. It provides minimum changes in drive axle angles. Again, to prevent, protect that drive axle, especially those used joints which can wear fast. And it minimizes load transfer between axles. The suspension components themselves rely on all the components working in harmony to perform its function. When one component gets worn, the stress transfer to the other components causes accelerated wear on these parts. Early detection of any worn part will prevent major repairs and provide long-term savings. And most of the detection can be done just by a simple visual look at the parts. So just a walk around. Here's some pictures that I was able to get from uh, CVSA on things that they find on the side of the road when they're doing inspections. I mean, there's a broken U-bolt, again, very visible. A cracked walking beam, again, very visible, it should have been caught. An equalizer bolt missing, and that the equalizer shifted. I mean, think of the extra damage that that's doing now. Again, that should have been caught. This one I'm sure was caught, but we made a quick repair by using a bungee cord. Not a good idea, again, they got caught, and here we are, you know, getting tagged at the side of the road. This is probably one of my favorites. You know, they say duct tape fixes everything. Well, I don't think it's the greatest way to repair an air spring. Uh, the guy just had a leak, and he thought he could wrap some duct tape around it and fix that up. And this one here, a broken suspension rod, you know, this, you can see right there by the rust on the area where it broke off that that's been broken for a long time. Again, a visual inspection would have caught that. We need to establish a preventative maintenance service plan. You know, some manufacturers will give you recommended service intervals. We probably should follow those. You know, we need to at least retort all of our fasteners. Uh, you know, if you follow their plan, but at least make once a year, you should check the torque in your fasteners. So, you know, various suspensions, various wears, various uh, intervals. But if you follow that manufacturer's recommended service interval, you're going to be doing uh, yourself justice in the long run. When we talk about different components, we talk about the leaf spring itself. Um, what is a leaf spring? What does it do? You know, it absorbs, stores, and then releases energy as the vehicle passes over the bumps in the road, uneven pavement. You know, the individual leaves that make up the assembly are held together with a center bolt. And that center bolt is to keep the leaves in alignment before the spring assembly is installed in the vehicle. After the assembly is in place, the tension of the U-bolts maintains that spring assembly alignment. But that center bolt is important. It keeps them from shifting forward and aft. If we do have a problem, our U-bolts come loose. So talking of the U-bolts themselves, we have to understand that they serve a very critical air role in four different areas. One, they provide the force required to clamp that leaf spring and related components firmly together. That eliminates any flexing of the leaf spring in the area between the U-bolts. The leaf springs are designed uh, to a certain way to flex and that center section should be rigid and tight. It will also prevent shearing of the center bolt and it provides the desired spring stiffness and contributes to maintaining the vehicle ride height and handling characteristics. One thing always to remember, you bolts should never be reused. If you're putting, uh, doing a major repair and you're taking the U-bolts off, you should be replacing them with new ones. Uh, torque is also, retorque 
is very important. In this example, we're showing what we call uh, stack settling. If you look at all those leaves in that assembly, and that's all held together tight with those U-bolts. You know, in movement, as it goes down the road, and especially a new spring, it can have paint between the layers, things of that nature. They can work out, and they work themselves out, and the U-bolts will loosen up. So you must retorque them after the initial installation. We recommend roughly 500 miles would be the break-in period that where you should retorque. When we talk about torque and the importance of torque, here's an example. This is from a hutch suspension. This is their recommended torques values for their different fasteners. If you look at that very top one, the inch and an eighth, they have two different torque settings. One they call the oiled and one they call the dry. Dry torque is a higher torque setting than the oil torque. And the reason for that is explained here in this area. When we torque a fastener, we are creating two things. We're one, creating tension in that fastener, and that tension is creating what we call clamp load. And it's the clamp load that we're trying to achieve. When the uh, suspension is designed and the components are designed to help you other, they calculate what the clamp load is needed to hold that assembly in place. So what's what we want to create? We want to create the correct clamp load. But as, as this chart will show you, that if we have a dry fastener, there's no lubrication on this, a lot of that torque is created from other areas other than the, the clamping force. 50% of it comes from the friction under the head of the nut, for example. And another 40% of it comes from the friction in the thread. And only 10% of that torque value is actually being applied to clamp force. So, if we lubricate that fastener, everything changes. And now we've increased that clamp force. And what happens is we, you know, have, could create a problem. Because now, with that lubricated thread, only 30% of the torque value comes from the friction under the head, 30% from the friction in the thread, and 40% is being applied to that clamp force. That's four times more than we wanted. So what we need to do is follow those charts, those recommendations from the manufacturers. If you're going to use an oil or lubricated thread, then use the lower torque value. If it's a dry thread, then use the higher one. Make sure we achieve the correct clamp load because we do not want to cause fail failures down the road. We could over torque, will cause increased clamp load, and now we could damage parts. So when we talk about it, we look at it and I said we needed to set up some sort of you know, inspection interval, some preventative maintenance. And I would recommend that you do that in the shop every six months, a more detailed inspection. Again, a lot of it's just visual. However, a quick visual inspection of the suspension should also be part of the operator's responsibility. You know, every morning when he does his pre-trip inspection, of his truck and trailer, he should also be looking at suspension components. You know, a quick look at the air springs or the spring assembly, hangers, torque rods, bushings, those kinds of things would have caught those problems from those previous pictures that I showed you and save you money in the long run, all right? I mean, it's the operator's responsibility for the safety of himself and the rig that he's putting on the road and all the other people that are traveling down that highway together with him. Air suspensions tend to have be a little more uh, you know, maintenance related when compared to a spring suspension. So let's talk about the air spring suspension. You know, let's talk about the air springs, height controller leveling valves, shock absorbers, mounting hardware, suspension arm bushings, torque rods and U-bolts. So, I mean, we've talked about the U-bolts. We went through it. We know how important the U-bolts are to the system, whether it's on this type of a suspension or on a spring suspension. You know, when we're looking at those air springs, we want to look and make sure there's no wear, if they're not starting to heat crack, make sure there's no abrasion scars, uh, you know, different things. But you're looking at the air spring, you should also be looking at the airline that's running into it. 
and just make sure it's not rubbing up against something and it's secure and it's in place the way it was originally built. Again, on the air springs, you know, you can look and you look to the left one or the right one on the vehicle, if they're the same height, the same amount of air in them, then everything's good. But if one isn't charged, there's a problem it needs to be looked into. And of course, on the rolling lobe style air spring, it's very important that you check it for any debris or foreign material that could have built up on that piston that goes up inside that lobe, you know, where the flexible member is rolling under. To get debris and, and dirt in there, it will continuously rub and it will chafe and it could wear a hole right in that flexible member. You know, we're going to talk a little more about height control leveling valves. You know, again, there's quick inspections that can be done to uh, just check and make sure everything is there. But on that pre trip inspection, all they got to do is look at them and make sure nothing's damaged, nothing's uh, worn. Um, and that spring, again, for the shocks. Just make sure your shocks are not have any broken mounts or there's any leaking. Again, quick visuals uh, inspections for that daily uh, trip, pre trip inspection. But a more detailed inspection for the height control valve and the linkage, for example, can be done when you bring them in on the six month interval. And the problem is that they're often, a lot of times, misdiagnosed as being defective and replaced for no reason. <clears throat> You know, you've got to remember one thing, some leveling valves are designed with what we call a delayed reaction, okay? And with that timing, it could be up to 15 seconds of delay. So just remember that when you're doing this test, that the air might not flow immediately. It might not be an immediate response type air valve. So all we're going to do is we're going to detach the uh, height control link from the height control valve lever. What we want to do at this time is just have a quick look at that linkage and make sure it's not damaged, bent. You know, there's little rubber uh, bushings in there sometimes, make sure that they're still in place and they're in good shape. Then we want to make sure we have 100 PSI in the system. We're going to raise that lever up 45 degrees. And as I explained before, you could have a time delay. You may have to wait 15 seconds uh, before you hear airflow. Okay, but after that time, the air should start to flow and it should inflate that, that airbag and it should start ri raising up the vehicle. Now drop that height control lever down 45 degrees and air pressure in the air spring should just be escaping. Okay, and it should lower. But remember again, if it's a delayed type valve, then it's going to take some time before you hear that air movement. If that goes well, then raise the height control valve lever again set a ride height of say 12.5 inches and you can then uh, just let the vehicle rest. What you want to do is you just want to let it sit for 15 minutes. That way you can check in the system if there's any leaks, the leaking would take place then. But you yourself in that 15 minutes can also just do another quick inspection of the airlines running in to that, those airbags. Make sure again that there's no uh, abrasion, they're not rubbing up against anything, they're secure. You can check for any uh, visible leaks using, you know, that old soapy water in a spray bottle. You can, you can do that. And after the 15 minutes, check that ride height that you set, again around 12 and a half inches, if that's what you set at. If it's still there, still at 12 and a half inches, then that valve's working properly, doing its job. You can now reinstall the height control linkage and torque that nut to the manufacturer's specification. And that's a quick check on a height control valve. Shock absorbers, a lot of times the damage is very visible. You know, shock's broken, the mount's broke. We can have leaks, you'll see leaks. And, and you have to understand when we talk about a leak, a true leak in a shock absorber, you will see the, the hydraulic fluid actually running down the side of the shock. If you just have a light coating of fluid on top of that shock, that's natural. That's called misting. And that just happens on a shock because it self lubricates itself. So for a true leaking shock, you will see the fluid running down the side of the shock. A quick check that you can do also is touch the shock and see if it's warm. When a shock's in operation, it actually generates heat. 
and that heat, of course, will warm up the outer uh, shell of the shock, and you should be able to feel it. Just remember one thing also, sometimes they can get very hot. If it's a real hot day out and the vehicles just come right into the shop and uh, you know, it's been on the road for a while, they can really heat up. So if you're going to do that and you're just going to check them to see if there's heat generated, make sure you're careful and just don't grab it but touch it lightly. But if it's hot, it's working. Hardware, again, one of the most overlooked areas we talk about, we, we need to retorque and we need to check that our tech fasteners are tight. And there's a lot of visual indicators that you can use to find out whether your fastener has come loose. You know, a trail of dust running down from a fastener or gaps in there or a rust trail, you can see that. And it tells you that there's something, there's space between that nut, for example, and the mating surface that it should be up again. When the vehicles come down the production line after they're assembled, they're painted. If you see a break in the paint around the back end of, say, a nut, well, for, that's telling you that nut's loose. It turned, it cracked the paint, it's come out. So again, you look at that, you look at different things and areas. Another common one, if you get a lot of dirt build up, you know, you've got a dusty environment, and you look at, like, the nuts, and one looks a lot cleaner than the others, the odds are it's loose because it vibrated and it just literally shook the dirt off of itself. So again, another quick indication, another easy way to look at it. Torque rods, you know, again, visual, a lot of times can do this. You can see whether a bushing is uh, cracked or worn or starting to, you know, shift out or walk out as we call it of, of the uh, torque arm itself. You know, but you also want to look at it and make sure those torque arms haven't been damaged, just they're not bent. And you also want to make sure they're not loose. I mean, the bushing can look good and everything's there, but you can check that really easily by just grabbing onto that torque arm and, and trying to move it up and down. And if you've got more than one eighth inch of movement, then those bushings probably should be replaced. So you need to look at that. And again, if you look at like a straddle pin type fastener, make sure you check the bolt holes where the, it fastens up. Make sure they haven't been elongated or worn. That's a good way and a good example of checking that kind of stuff. So again, as I said, a lot of these inspections can be done very simply, just a visual check. You know, we set that six month uh, preventative maintenance plan when the vehicle's in the shop and we do our walk arounds uh, pre-trips, we catch a lot of these problems. We save ourselves a lot of money in the long run. Thanks for joining me for this month's seminar. Next month's seminar will cover air dryers and we're going to talk about uh, some troubleshooting techniques that you can use.